Sandy Springs has no long-term liabilities. Has no long-term liabilities. Local governments across the country are failing their citizens. Mired in debt and unfunded pension obligations, more and more cities are cutting services and raising taxes. According to the National League of Cities, American municipalities will likely face a shortfall of between 60 and 80 billion dollars between 2010 and 2012. But in Sandy Springs, a city of 100,000 people on the north side of Atlanta, something extraordinary is happening. In comparison to all these other cities and counties that are having to furlough and are having these terrible pension problems, uh, our situation is excellent. Ava Galambos is a former economist and the mayor of Sandy Springs, Georgia. A few years ago, Galambos and the Committee for Sandy Springs set out to create a completely new kind of city, a fiscally accountable city whose goal it is to provide quality services at a reasonable price. Longtime Sandy Springs resident Oliver Porter was also a member of the Committee for Sandy Springs. The responsibility for actually implementing the city fell on my shoulders. Porter is a retired corporate executive, an artist, and the author of two books on how to create a 21st century city. This is the story of Sandy Springs, Georgia, the city that outsourced everything. Five years ago, the Sandy Springs community was an unincorporated part of Fulton County, Georgia. For many, many years, Fulton County ruled us from downtown Atlanta. We were taxed uh, heavily, uh, and, being, and being a more affluent community, more of the taxes were gathered here, and then very little of the money was being spent here. So the people in Sandy Springs got pretty tired of this. We wanted local control. We wanted to have a voice in our own government, and we wanted to keep our local money at home. In Georgia, the state legislature must authorize a referendum before a new city can incorporate. In the summer of 2005, Sandy Springs' decades-long fight for independence finally paid off. The legislature was totally controlled by the Democrats, and as soon as the uh, majority became Republican, we passed the bill to authorize the referendum in Sandy Springs, and it passed with 92% of the vote. Came up with the concept of using the private industry uh, out of necessity uh, because as a volunteer group we had no authority, no funds, no staff, and would not have any of those until the moment the city was formed, and at that moment we had to be a functional city. Sandy Springs Incorporated on December 1st, 2005. The new city government contracted with the company CH2M Hill to pave the streets, pick up the trash, maintain the parks, and do virtually everything else we expect our municipal governments to do. The contract is not a single company, but it is a managing partner with a, with a large number of subcontractors specializing in the areas. So they provide the internal functions of the admin, the finance, etc., and then they go out and they get subcontractors to do the other functions. And companies are good at managing that, better, it turns out, than governments are. Why did Sandy Springs choose a public-private partnership? For starters, CH2M Hill did its job for $25 million the first year. In a traditionally run city, those same city services would have cost $50 million. It's a big improvement over, I know, what Fulton County was before. A huge improvement. We have far exceeded any expectation that I had. By operating more efficiently, Sandy Springs has been able to make the kinds of capital investments that Fulton County had failed to make for decades. We never saw any paving of roads. Our roads were deteriorating. And we have paved and paved something like 90 miles of streets. We built uh, several new parks. Uh, some of them have already won awards. This is uh, rather new. I think it's been here for about a year. Um, so this is a, a fantastic development for families. We have probably the b most state-of-the-art traffic management system now, uh, in, certainly in Georgia, maybe in the country. In terms of fuel and time, investing in a cutting-edge traffic control system has saved Sandy Springs motorists around $12 million over the past two years. Virtually the only thing Sandy Springs doesn't outsource are police and fire services. But unlike so many other cities, Sandy Springs hasn't fallen into the pension trap. When we began the city, we made a clear decision that we wouldn't have 
defined contribution in 401ks and we were not going into defined benefits so we did that to begin with. We also put in health plans where you can put the money into a savings account. With no pension storm on the horizon, Sandy Springs is able to focus on giving the people what they want, high quality public safety services. The 911 system that uh, has been employed is, is certainly state of the art, far superior to uh, the county. Here everything is, we do is a lot different and many of the ideas and things that we do today are, come from our people. And we have paramedics that are just uh, cutting edge. We have tools that are cutting edge. I've actually had to use them right after Sandy Springs became Sandy Springs. And they were in our house with, within minutes and it was very comforting. So far in the last four years, we've had 25 confirmed saves of people who basically had died and we brought them back. And despite all its investments, Sandy Springs has managed to remain fiscally sound. Not only has the city been able to operate with no increase in taxes whatsoever uh, on property taxes, uh, but it has built a reserve and increased the capital programs throughout while the unincorporated portion, remaining unincorporated portion of the county has actually increased its taxes. It is possible if you're efficient with that same millage rate to get something done. And I think that's the best proof that this model works. To me, the most single most important public opinion survey was the first election held after the city was started, four years after it was started. And every incumbent that ran, uh, the least vote one of them received was 84%. Uh, that's an amazing number. Since 2005, Four other Georgia cities have incorporated, and Oliver Porter helped all of them implement the Sandy Springs model. Can existing cities realize the same kind of efficiencies by outsourcing city services? The difficult news, if you were trying to convert an existing city, is the simply the political situation. Um, you have existing employees, often unionized, who are just by nature going to be opposed to this. They're going to be concerned. I can see why the public employees are reticent, and nobody likes change anyway. Nobody likes change. But if your city is fixing to go bankrupt, there may have to be some change. <laughs> I think everyone is aware of the, of the financial difficulties of so many municipalities across the country. And I think it's time that people get very serious about looking for an alternative. And I know of no better alternative to look to than the public-private partnership model.